The Ministry of Secondary Education has developed a distance learning platform in collaboration with MinPostel, CRTV, UNESCO and UNICEF for students of secondary education in Cameroon. A series of lessons taught by qualified teachers. For secondary school students, learning has never been easier with distance learning. An initiative by the Ministry of Secondary Education under the stewardship of Professor Polena Lobalunga in collaboration with the Ministry of Post and Telecommunications, CRTV, and UNESCO. And UNICEF. We are introducing distance learning as another teaching and learning method which is different from the traditional classroom setting that you are all used to. In the distance education mode, you are not with the teacher in person, so take your time, relax, listen to the teacher, take down notes and visit the following links for any questions or answers to your question. Take it in your stride. Danova Lyunga, Minister of Secondary Education. Good day, students. I am Madame Efinge Constance Konfum, your educational policies and comparative education teacher. Our lesson for today is meant for level three students and it is educational policies. For us to proceed with our lesson, we are going to start with an introduction, then we are going to state the objectives, we are going to remind ourselves of the previous knowledge and we will get to our lesson. Before we start this lesson, we need to know what this subject is all about. This subject is a sub-discipline and it is made up of six themes which totals 22 hours of teaching and learning. But today, we are going to be concerned with the fifth theme, which is financing of educational policies. Our learning outcome is that by the end of this lesson, you should be able to solve true life professional problems using resources from educational policies. As far as this lesson is concerned, it is divided into two parts. We have the first, which is the identification of the sources for the financing of education. And we have the second, which is procedures for the mobilization of the sources for the financing of education. We will start our lesson by revising our previous knowledge. And as far as our previous knowledge is concerned, you remember that during our last lesson, we talked on the basics of educational policies. And during our last but one lesson, we talked about the analysis of educational policies. For our integration activity, you will be able to solve situation problems linked to the identification of sources of financing of education. Our lesson, we had already said it, and it is, identification of the sources for the financing of education. At the end of this teaching learning process, there is an objective that we want you to achieve. And this objective is that you should be able to solve problem situations related to the identification of the sources of financing of education in Cameroon. We are going to revise. Let's look at what we have on the board. We are all going to read. We are all going to read. Let's all read together. Your classmates cannot remember how the economy contributes to the putting in place of an educational policy. 
help him by presenting to him the economic determinant in the analysis of educational policies in Cameroon. If we are all there, and if we are together, we will try to get the answers. Can somebody help us with the answers? I think we have three points as far as the answer to this problem is concerned. Yes, Enanga. Very good. The first point is that it is the capacity of a country to provide its population with school infrastructures, school libraries, school laboratories, computer pools, and others. Yes, who else? As far as the second point is concerned, Ibrahim. Excellent. The second point is budgetary allocation to the ministries of education. And the last point, yes, no, your answer is not quite good. Yes, Joseph. Okay, recruitment and remuneration of personnel of the ministries of education. Excellent. We are going to start our lesson with a didactic situation. And we are all going to read this didactic situation because it is this didactic situation that is going to permit us to proceed and go through all of our lesson. We are all still going to read. Some of your schoolmates have an argument on the fact that education in Cameroon is financed by the ministries of education, while others argue that it is the parents through the PTA that finance education in Cameroon. Clarify them by identifying the sources of financing of education. Our task, therefore, is that you should identify the sources of financing of education in Cameroon. For us to proceed, I will have to give you a model of what is expected from you. As far as the sources of financing of education in Cameroon are concerned, we have three main categories. And these three main categories are, first, we have public financing. Second, we have financing from technical and financial partners. And lastly, we have financing from families. We are going to start with the first, public financing. When we talk about public financing, we are talking about the government, what the government does in order to make sure that education is facilitated and made easy for the teachers and the learners. It means that we are referring here to the government. And as far as public financing is concerned, we have two structures. The first structure is the state. I repeat, the first structure is the state. How then does the state finance educational policies in Cameroon? The state finances educational policies in Cameroon through running budgets that they provide to the ministries of education. These running budgets help these ministries to be able to take care of most of the aspects of education in Cameroon. The state also constructs schools. It also takes care of pedagogic projects. It pays salaries of personnel of these ministries of education. The next, as far as public financing is concerned, is decentralized territorial collectivities. When we talk about decentralized territorial collectivities, we are talking about councils and regions as far as decentralization is concerned. This means that councils and regions have a big role to play as far as financing of education in Cameroon is concerned. But how do they do this? For councils and regions to do this, 
they, first of all, provide budgetary allocations for the financing of education. They provide minimum packages. They provide e school infrastructures by building schools, by repairing the buildings, for example, that have been dilapidated, by provision of tables and benches for the uses in the different schools. The second structure that is into financing of education in Cameroon, we have the technical and financial partners. What do we mean by the technical and financial partners? First of all, technical partners. When we talk about technical partners, we are talking about those partners that are strictly straight on into financing of education. We are talking about bodies whose main aim is to finance education and make education better. We equally have financial partners. When we talk about financial partners, we are talking, for example, about the World Bank, and you can name the others. And as far as technical and financial partners are concerned, we have international organizations. And these international organizations, for example, include the Francophonie, the Commonwealth, the Japanese Corporation, we have UNESCO, we have ISESCO, we have UNICEF, we have the World Bank, we have Plan Cameroon, and you can go on and go on. But what are their activities? How do they finance education in Cameroon? They do this through the following. The first is that they are usually involved in the recruitment and remuneration of teachers, in some cases, into the public service. What we are saying here is not that they are solely in charge of that. There are some cases where they come in in order to help the government in areas of remuneration and insertion of these teachers into the public service. These international organizations also help to construct schools. We have many examples. And the one that is very fresh in our mind, for example, is the Japanese corporation. And we know that they have been going around our country and helping to build schools in the Ministry of Basic Education. These international organizations equally train executive staff of the Ministries of Education on new concepts in education. When we talk about new concepts, for example, if there is a new concept that has been seen and that the government thinks that it is going to help education to be better in Cameroon, it can call these experts, these technical and financial partners to come and help in the training of executive staff of the ministries. We have, for example, when the CBA was to be introduced in our teaching learning system, some of these international organizations came in in order to help. Also, as far as technical and financial partners are concerned, we equally have national organizations. It means that it is not only the international organizations, but even organizations in our own country. When we talk of national organizations, for example, we are talking about non-governmental organizations. We are talking about associations, like the Parents Teacher Association. We are talking about cultural groups and many others. And still on national organizations, we have private actors. There are some people who privately want to fund education and make it better. We equally have enterprises that are interested in education and they want education to be better in our Cameroon. And how do they carry this out? They do this, they do this through different activities, through varied financial supports, they give gifts to facilitate education, for example, prizes for good performance, they can provide course books for the learners, and you can name many others. They can also provide tables and benches, computers for the learners. 
some of them even attribute scholarships in order to make learners to go further in their education and many other general gifts. As far as families are concerned, families aid in education by providing school needs for their children through provision of course books, exercise books, uniforms, and many others. They also pay obligatory dues like examination fees in order to permit their children to get into official examinations. They provide internet for their children in cases where the children need to get some information from the internet. They also pay transport fares for their children to permit their children to go to and come back from school. Now we are going to go back to our didactic situation. Our didactic situation was trying to ask us or making us to know whether it is the ministries of education that finance education or it is the parents. From what we have already said, we already know and we are going to reiterate it that we have public financing which is carried out by the state and by decentralized territorial collectivities. And when the state finances education, it does so through budget for the functioning of these ministries of education. It pays the salaries of personnel of these ministries too. We also have decentralized territorial collectivities who finance education through minimum packages repairs of school infrastructure, provision of benches, and many others. We equally have technical and financial partners, and they include international organizations and national organizations. And we said international organizations, they help in the financing of education in Cameroon through the recruitment of teachers, construction of schools, training of executive staff of the ministries of education in some areas of teaching and learning. We also have national organizations who equally help in the financing of education by providing tables and benches for the learners. They attribute scholarships to the learners and many other varying gifts. Lastly, we have families. And we said that families help in the financing of education by providing school needs for their children, like course books and uniforms. Families pay obligatory fees for examination for their children. They take care of the transportation of their kids, and they provide snacks for their children. We should therefore note that as far as the financing of education in Cameroon is concerned, it is neither only the ministry of education, nor the parents that take care of education as far as financing is concerned in Cameroon. But the three main sources of financing of education are, one, public financing, which we have said is made up of the state and decentralized territorial collectivities. We have equally talked about technical and financial organizations in which we have international and national organizations and we have equally talked about the families. We are going to do a short integration activity in order to permit you to practice what we have been talking about. And we are going to read together. In a radio program, the headmaster of a primary school explains that he has not yet received the minimum package and parents are timidly paying the PTA levy. His words lead us to the question of the sources of financing of education that has to be clarified. To do this, you have to, one, state the sources of financing which are not rightly used in this school and justify your answer. Secondly, give the other sources of financing of education that have not been mentioned by the headmaster. I'm going to give you some time to do this, just about one or two minutes. Okay, we are going to get to our problem. Um, the first that we tried to find out was, what are the two sources of financing that were not right? Can somebody help us? 
you? Joseph, no. Eposi, no. Okay, I'm going to help you. The first thing that we have to note about what we have just said and about this question in particular is that public financing carried out by decentralized territorial collectivities through minimum packages. This means that the headmaster was not supposed to depend on the PTA. Therefore, he had to use the minimum package for him to start his academic year. The second two that was a problem was under the technical and financial partners, and precisely the PTA. The PTA funds are not supposed to be used at the beginning of the academic year. If you all got it right, or if you didn't get it, note that those are the answers. And the last source of financing that has not been mentioned in the problem that we just solved is the family. So, we know that we have three main sources as far as financing of education in our country is concerned. I'm going to give you some work to go and do at home so that it will permit you to continue working. I will read for you. Classify the following under the main sources for the financing of education in Cameroon. Minimum package, buying of tables and benches, construction of schools, attribution of scholarships, gifts of school manuals, training of executive staff of ministries on the competence-based approach, transportation of learners and school needs. Our lesson was taken from a number of sources. The first one that you can refer to at your leisure time is the Law on the Orientation of Education in Cameroon of 1998, the official program of the teacher training colleges of 2016, the Law on Decentralization of July 2004, and the Strategic Document for Growth and Employ Employment. This is the end of our lesson. We hope you understood what we were talking about. We are going to, in our next lesson, study procedures for the mobilization of sources for the financing of education. Thank you.